Hi folks, I've had a lot of questions on my Miller table, so I thought I'd do another video here on how I build them here for those who uh, don't have a great deal of experience in building these. So I'm going to take this a little more detailed if I can this time and uh, work out some of the problems that some people have had. Well, one of the features that you can add to this table is a uh, gold bottle hole in there so you can just sweep all your gold down into the bottle when you're finished. This is strictly an optional item though. This has an elevation bolt on it. This allows you to make minute adjustments to the elevation. You can uh, raise her and lower it to uh, change the angle of the sluice to increase or decrease the water flow. Well, you can make your table out of just about anything that you want to. I've tried just about every type of wood and uh, tile and things like that and uh, keep coming back to this melamine board. However, I do have a friend who has made a table out of uh, the big cutting boards from Walmart that uh, has worked very well for him. Well, I made a table up here to show you one of the main problems that some people are having. And that is water leaking into the substrate uh, through the gold bottle hole. And uh, that will cause the wood to swell and then it separates the lamination here of this plastic to the wood. So you have to really uh, waterproof this very well to keep this from happening. And once you do, this will be a very stable and uh, a good table for you. And I'll go through this here and uh, show you how to do that uh, very easily. Well, as you can see here, there's only six pieces to making one of these. You can use some 1x3s for the side pieces and glue two of them together for the headboard or just use a single board. A single piece across for the water smoothing bar and a little narrow strip to go on the front end of the nose piece. Well, you can make these any size that you want. This is the size that I'm making mine this time. This is to fit on my little mini stand uh, to go along with my uh, sluices. So this is the measurements here that I'm making for mine and you can get an idea from these and maybe go from there for yours. Well, the first thing I do is cut the board to length. Well, I generally split a cedar fence board down the middle to use for the sides, but I'm doing three or four tables this time, so I think just so that they're all going to look alike, I think I'll just cut them uh, out of some two befores. Now we'll trim the side rails down to the finished height. I usually cut them uh, about two and three quarter inches high. Well, to make the headboard for the water bar, I usually like to have it at least an inch thick. So I'm going to glue a couple of half inch pieces here together. You can use one three quarter inch piece if you'd rather, or you can glue two of them together to make it a little thicker. I just glue two half inches together and uh, that works very well for me. To mark the hole where I'm going to drill for the water bar, 
I take a half inch plug, put a number six screw through the middle of it, and then insert it into a T. Then I put a piece of quarter inch plywood or board down underneath to give me the spacing between the water bar and the bottom of the miller table. Then you just press hard on that and it will leave a little indentation. I use a 1 and 1 16th inch Forstner bit to drill about halfway through the board. This will be for the uh, T fitting. I swap out the bits and put a quarter inch bit in and drill a pilot hole for the hole saw. With a 7 8 inch hole saw I drill the rest of the way through the board. This hole will be about the right size for some half inch plumbing to come into the T from the back side of it. I generally like to drill the two different size holes so the pipes will fit a little better. But if you wish, you can uh, drill just one hole that will fit the T and uh, call it good. If you wish to put in a gold bottle, Here's the measurements that I use for mine for drilling the hole in there. I'll be drilling multiple holes so I clamp the base of the miller table down so it can't move. My first hole will be with a 5 8 inch bit. This is only going to be deep enough so that the little ridge around the uh, gold bottle cap will stick above the table slightly. Well, without moving the table, I'm going to uh, change the bit out and put a quarter inch Forstner bit in. Then I'm going to drill all the way through the table. This will create a drop hole from uh, the top of the table down into the gold bottle. And this is the path the gold will follow as it goes down into the bottle. Okay, now we'll drill a hole through the cap in the bottle. So what I usually do is uh, drop the cap down in the hole and take a little masking tape and put over it to hold it into place. And this will keep the, uh, the lid from getting pushed out. Line the bit up perfectly in the hole, and then go ahead and drill it out. Now you have a perfectly centered hole in your bottle cap. I usually like to take some of these uh, little grinding tools and make kind of a little uh, ramp around there so it makes it easier for the gold to slide down into the hole.
Well, these are the three main products that I usually use on my tables. I use the Type Bond Type 3 waterproof glue, the Minwax Helmsman spar varnish for the wood, and most of important is a Rust-Oleum Universal Bonding Primer for waterproofing the uh, gold hole on this and also the rest of the board. You can usually buy this at Lowe's or Walmart. I have found very few products will stick to this melamine board and that's what makes it tough to waterproof. But this bonding primer is a very tough hard surface that you can spray on it and it will allow anything to stick to it and it will also waterproof the board. Very good product. At this point in time I like to mask off both holes front and back with masking tape and uh, seal them before I uh, paint the rest of the board. I usually take and spray two or three good heavy squirts of uh, the bonding primer down inside the hole and let it flow all the way through. Flip the board over and do the same with the opposite side. Uh, you can use a little Q-tip as a paintbrush and help spread it around down inside that tube. Give this at least three or four good coats, letting it dry in between each coat. I like to use the Helmsman spar varnish to uh, seal all the wood and also I like to have it as a top coat for the uh, bonding primer on the uh, gold hole. I generally do with it just like I do with the bonding primer. Put three coats on it letting it dry in between each coat. That will really seal this uh, hole up very well for you. Do both sides and uh, be sure to spray it good so that it runs down inside the hole and gives it a good coating. Well, after it's all dried, I remove the uh, masking tape and take 150 grit sandpaper and if there's any little paint or residue above the hole, I sand it down flush. Do this to both sides. Next, give the entire base a uh, good sanding, both front and back. And, uh, but be careful, don't go down too much because that's a very thin layer of plastic on there. Now you can take the bonding primer and give it three or four good heavy coats, both front and back. Also, make sure you get the ends and the sides. To treat the uh, rough cut edge, I usually uh, use the Helmsman for the first two or three coats and mask it off on the end there, prevent the overspray, and then just squirt uh, the Helmsman on the very end of it there. I like to give it about three good coats. The Helmsman will soak into the wood there and uh, give it a good base sealer on it. At this point in time, I usually take a Q-tip with a little uh, paper towel on it and shove it down inside the hole so it bulges up uh, on the top side of the board there.
This will kind of keep some of the chalkboard paint that I'm going to put on next from uh, running down inside the hole. I usually like to have a little two-tone paint here so that I can spot the hole pretty easy. Rust-Oleum chalkboard paint is something that I like to put on either as a, just a sealer or as a final coat. In this case it'll be the final coat. I usually like to use a little 3 inch roller to apply this. This stuff dries real thin so you want to give it about oh, 4 or 5 very good heavy coats on this and letting it dry in between. Also after it'll take about 3 days to really fully cure. On the gold bottle lid I usually open the hole up to the size of the uh, bottle mouth with a tapered reamer you can buy from Harbor Freight. This uh, gives you a little bigger hole for the gold to fall into. As you can see here the hole in the lid is bigger than the hole coming down into it, which is what we want. Now that the base is painted, then you can waterproof all the rest of the boards with the Helmsman Spar Varnish. To waterproof the hole where the plumbing comes through, I like to do like I did with the gold bottle hole. I like to mask it off first and then uh, spray very heavy coats down inside the hole. Make sure it gets down in there and soaks into the wood very well. Then you can remove the masking tape and give the rest of the board about three good coats of spar varnish. I like to give all the wood at least three or four good coats of spar varnish. You can uh, wet sand with uh, 300 grit sandpaper in between coats if you like. For the spray bar, you take a T, a couple of caps, and enough tubing to expand it across the width of the table. To mark where I'm going to drill the holes, I take a magic marker and draw a straight line the full length of the water bar. I mark the line off in half inch increments and then I use a 1 8 inch drill to drill the spray holes. I like to have the water streams hit the crack between the base and the backboard. This allows the water streams to mix together and make a more even flow of water down the table. To put the nose piece on, I just take a little tight bond glue and spread on there and uh, then clamp it to the end of the board. I like this to extend down about three quarters of an inch underneath the board. This is something that I put on there because the water will try to work its way back up the bottom of the board and dump your tailings back where you don't want them. This will ensure that the water flow off the end of the table will go straight down the board and into your catch basin and not try to work its way back up under the bottom of the board. On the elevation bar, I drill a hole just big enough to barely conceal the head of the nut. This is a quarter by twenty nut and about three inches long. This bar goes across the back of the table there on the very end. I like to round off the edges on there so there's no sharp corners to dig you. 
Well, you can uh, use just a regular nut on here for doing the adjustment, or you can buy one of these camera hot shoe uh, attachment knobs that uh, you can buy off Amazon. This little arrangement will allow you to elevate the back of the table and change the angle in very, very fine increments. Well, last but not least, you want to apply a thin coat of silicone to all the cracks on there. Don't let it spread out into the bottom of the board because the water will hit it and it'll disrupt the flow of the water. Also, don't forget to seal the gold bottle cap. Well, if you want to do just a basic table, this is what it'll look like when you get it finished. And if you want to finish it up a little fancier, you can put a cap over the spray bar. Now this is a style that I've used for the past two years. It's worked pretty well for me. But you can uh, design these any way you want. On this go-round, I decided to try something here that's got a little lower side rails on it to uh, maybe make it easier to put the uh, material on the table. So far I quite like this uh, design on here and it's not too hard to make. You can uh, just take a jigsaw and cut the curves on there. A little pump I found that works very well for this is a little 264 gallon per hour pump that I picked up from Harbor Freight. They also have a just a plain 200 gallon per hour that works very well too. To adjust the water smoothing bar, I usually put a couple of quarters underneath there. That gives me just about an eighth of an inch uh, space under there, which will be just about right. Well, if all goes well, you should have a nice glass smooth surface like you do here. And uh, I think I'll try running some material here that I've had some high hopes for and uh, see what we get out of it. The brush I like the most is some of these nylon bristle brushes. They're used for basting and you can buy them in any grocery store, Walmart or wherever. You want to use it to keep the material moving. The gold can ride down the sand, but if it comes in contact with the surface of the table down there, then it will stay put usually. If you want a table that will work more material, you want to make it wider rather than longer. You only need a table that's about 12 inches long because as you can see here, most of the gold will drop out right at the first three or four inches here. So going wider is better than going longer. If you find some of your smaller gold is moving on down the table, you might want to back off on the uh, water flow just a little bit there and uh, to where it'll keep those on the table here. Well, when you get finished up, then you can uh, sweep your gold down into the bottle and you have nice clean gold and it's already bottled for you and ready to go. So I hope this has been of some help to some of you who wish to build one of these on your own. I think you'll find that this is one of the handiest tools you can have uh, for prospecting. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I appreciate your watching. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye now.